If the sanctions continue, of course, we are continuing. We have been continuing with the sanctions. So it is not new to us. Because we know that every time when the sanctions are, are imposed upon us, they are done without our consent. So we don't have any say, even though we have been talking every now and then, talking about the, the negative impact of the, of the arms embargo on, on us. So these sanctions are not new. And so many countries in the world are surviving with these sanctions. They are carrying along and they are moving and performing their functions and duties. So the issue of sanctions is not an issue. Even though it is uh, affecting us in a way or the other, but we cannot stop because the sanctions have been imposed on us. We will continue and we'll continue to operationalize and implement the, the agreement as it is. Uh, the sanctions which have been imposed on us, of course, are affecting us in the sense that if we have any of our officials who wants to travel anywhere and that person is sanctioned, then definitely cannot go there. I'm one of those people who have been affected. Because I was supposed to be in the Rome talks, but because I'm under sanction, I did not go. So that is not an issue. There are so many others who have not been sanctioned and they are capable of performing the, these functions and duties. So we'll continue with the implementation of the agreement as it is. This uh, takes me to the next, what are you doing if to have the sanctions lifted. Well, we are, there are so many conditions that have been put on, on that, so that we, after it is, and it is after implementing those conditions that the sanctions will be lifted. Of course, some of these conditions are just conditions which are impossible to implement. So these are conditions that are put as an obstacle and as hurdles to the implementation of the agreement. People are not serious and they say uh, the government of South Sudan is not doing its job. I don't know who is that person who has taken upon himself the evaluation of the performance of the government of South Sudan. I think, I thought it is the people of South Sudan who have the right to evaluate their government, not others. Because the yardstick which you use is not the same yardstick, which they use is not the same yardstick that, will, that is used by the people of South Sudan. So we are continuing with the implementation of the agreement and the deployment of these forces. These forces will be deployed if they so wish. Otherwise, we may move them out from the training centers, put them somewhere until we get the arms. And if the international community is insisting and saying, you must employ them, then we will do so, if that will help. However, that will not affect us in the implementation of chapter two of the agreement, and uh, we are continuing with phase two of the training. Phase two will move as soon as possible to the, uh, to the containment sites, and from the containment sites, they will go to the training centers. The only mistake we have learned from the past, a mistake was done last time when we decided to take the forces to the, to the training centers without first checking them in the containment sites, for their arms. This time, everybody, anybody going to the going to the containment site must come with his or her rifle. So that when they graduate, when we graduate them later, we give them those same rifles. If the sanctions are not lifted, we, they will be given the same rifles of theirs graduated with that, those rifles and they are deployed. It is unfortunate that this force now is unable to, 
we are unable to arm it, but uh, the, the SSDF forces, part, part of the SSDF, which was in the cantonment or in the, in, the, in the barracks, they have their arms in the barracks. And so if we are, it is, we see it unfair to arm those who have their arms in the barracks and leave out those who, who came from the cantonment sites. And those, for, the, for those who came from the cantonment sites, of course, they left their arms at home in their homes. So this is where our problem is. So we are not seeing it fair to arm those who have arms and leave and deploy those who are not armed without. At the same time, there is no way we can, uh, we can, uh, we can deploy the arm component of the unified forces without the other arm. Otherwise, we will not call it a unified force. We are continuing with the implementation and uh, despite all these sanctions, those will not affect us internally and will continue to, to do whatever we can to have the agreement implemented so that we move to the, for elections as soon as possible. Yes, of course, whatever fun sanctions that are taken against you or imposed on you, they ultimately affect you in a way or the other. And this also affects your relations with others. And, and for that matter, we are, uh, we are even relying much on the, on the African Union, which said African problems should be solved by African Africans, or African solutions, African problems to be resolved by Africans by African solutions. This is what they are saying. But uh, up to now, we are, they are not being allowed to, do, to implement that policy. So we are continuing and we will see how best we can. On the issue of the return of the cattle, well, uh, of course, these cattle are moving. They have gone to, are going to their respective home areas. And, uh, and those cattle, when they came here, they did not, they did not just come voluntarily. They came because of cer certain circumstances that forced them. And uh, up to now, this, even though these circumstances have not yet subsided, nevertheless, they have to go. And they have, they are, those who have not yet arrived are on the way moving, and most of them have arrived now in their home areas. So there is no problem as to the, their demands or what is needed in terms of health care for the animals and so forth. All these are issues that will be addressed in due course. Uh, for the for the for the cut and paste on the action which 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 I which I showed you here, it is cut and paste because there is no change in the wording. It is just the same words which were used last year, and these same words have been used this year. Only the date is changed. And only the date it changed because it was issued by Biden. So it is, only, it is only the change of date. So it is cut and paste. And this is simply because they don't even give themselves time to look, to evaluate what is happening on the ground. So that you eliminate some of the points or some of the issues that were mentioned in the action plan. So, yes, it is cut and paste. And if you want it, all the copies are there. You will compare the copies and see exactly what is the difference. There is no difference at all. Uh, I think this, uh, these, are, these are all that I can say. For Mariah, F uh, Mariah FM, Mariah FM, we are in crisis with you and should have not been allowed by Ministry of Foreign Affairs to come and attend this. Had I known from the very beginning, I would have sent you out. Because Mariah FM has refused to be, to be registered by the media authority. And the registration is free just to be registered and given your license so that you cooperate like other, if SSBC and the, and the 
is a SSBC can be registered. Who is that above SSBC here? Which media house is above SSBC for it to operate in South Sudan without a license, without registration? I had already issued an order that Miraya FM should not be allowed to attend any government function. And any Miraya FM, any Miraya FM uh, journalist who comes not authorized, not registered, will definitely be sent away or arrested because he is operating illegally. And his Miraya FM, Miraya FM is one of the of the radios that is spreading lies and supporting, causing havoc in South Sudan. Because it is not being, it is, it is not registered and as such it is working at will. And they claim that they are working for peace. You are lucky that you have attended this, but next time don't attend. Otherwise you will be arrested. Thank you. Our extent as the foreign ministry, any institution operating in the Republic of South Sudan must adhere to the regulation of this country. And uh, we are in discussion with the with UNMIS, and we really want to finalize. You take back that message. Now, before we close, I want to just mention something that has been left out. On the region, they said, insecurity in the region and the surrounding. Our president is mediating peace in Sudan, and he has really achieved a, a current stability that the Sudan is, a Juba peace agreement. Today, we are sending a peacekeeping to Congo, 300 units, to join East African Community Protection Force. We are shocked on this order that we cause uh, instability in the region and in beyond. This is really what is now causing us this kind of meeting to come. If they cannot recognize that, this is an issue that I want to inform you. Finally, we have our uh, IGP of police here. Uh, the deputy chief of staff, I mean, of uh, the deputy CDF is here, and we have our uh, internal security and external security are here. The government continue to reinforce directive given by the president to remove all the any hindrance across South Sudan for all the humanitarian to go to our population. This is why they are here. Those who are also attempting to stop this food will be dealt with by, by law. Like the people who are caught, they will not be allowed to leave. On issues of cattle herders that are still in Equatoria, the order is still in place. They have to go. This is for our own benefit as a country, not because the, anybody is pushing us anywhere. So this is the objective why our uh, team are here to, to hear about this briefing. We also want the city of Juba, the city of Malakal, the city of Wau, and all other cities that they should be peaceful so that those who are living in those cities should enjoy facilities and go and check, like those who are being stopped on the way. Those things should stop. And, and, and our IGP is on top of this, whether it is uh, uh, a traffic police or any other person. We have been discussing all this normally, and these are the directive of the government to all our institutions. We are just reinforcing them on this press conference. To our state government and the local government level, they should observe all the instruction that has been given by His Excellency the President and the government so that intercommunal violence 
are not reinforced by government policies. These are local community violence, whether as a result of cattle herding, cattle raiding, child abduction, our state government should reinforce to stop all those things. And the River Nile, all access should be given for those moving from here to Rang and beyond. These are clear directive of the government. We'll be dealing with those people who are attacking us from media and will not be keeping quiet. Foreign policy is informed by domestic foreign policies. So any issue inside that we are not clear of it, will now, from now on, we'll be able to deal with them one.